Cycle of the Werewolf by Stephen King September As the month wears on and the night of the full moon approaches again, the frightened people of Tarker's Mills wait for a break in the heat, but no such break comes. Elsewhere, in the wider world, the baseball divisional races are decided one by one and the football exhibition season has begun. In the Canadian Rockies, Ollie old Willard Scott informs the people of Tarker's Mills a foot of snow falls on the 21st of September. In this corner of the world, summer hangs right in there. Temperatures linger in the 80s during the days. Kids, three weeks back in school, and not happy to be there, sit and welter in droning classrooms where the clocks, clock seems to have been set to click only one minute forward for each hour that, that passes in real time. Husbands and wives argue viciously for no reason, and at O'Neill's Gulf Station out on Town Road by the entrance to the turnpike, a tourist gives, is giving Pucky O'Neill some lip about the price of gas, and Pucky brains the fellow with the gas pump nozzle. The fellow, who is from New Jersey, needs four stitches in his upper lip, and goes away muttering balefully under his breath about lawsuits and subpoenas. I don't know what he's bitching about, Pucky says sullenly that night in the pub. I only hit him with half my force, you know. I'd hit him with all my force. Wouldn't knock his frockin' smart mouth right the frock off, you know? Sure, Billy, Billy Robertson says, because Pucky looks like he might hit him with all his force if he disagrees. How about another beer, Puck? You're frockin' A, Pucky says. Bill Strumfuller puts his wife in the hospital over a bit of egg that the dishwasher didn't take off one of his plates. He takes one look at that dried yellow smear on the plate she tried to give him for his lunch and pounds her a good, run, good one. As Pucky O'Neill would have said, Bill hits her with all his force. I'm sorry, bitch, he says, standing over Donna Lee, who is sprawled out on the kitchen floor, her nose broken and bleeding, the back of her head also bleeding. My mother used to get the dishes clean, and she didn't have a dishwasher either. What's the matter with you? Later. Milton will tell the doctor of the Portland General Hospital emergency room that Donnelly fell down the back stairs. Donnelly, terrorized and cowed after nine years in a marital war zone, will back this up. Around seven o'clock on the night of the full moon, a wind springs up, the first chill wind of that long summer season. It brings a rack of clouds from the north, and for a while, the moon plays tag with these clouds, ducking in and out of them, turning their edges to beaten silver. Then the clouds grow thicker, and the moon disappears. Yet, it is there. Tides 20 miles out of Tarker's Mills feel its pull, and so, closer to home, does the beast. Around two in the morning, a dreadful squealing arises from the pig pen of Elmer Zinman on the West Stage Road, about 12 miles out of town. Elmer goes for his rifle, wearing only his pajama pants and slippers. His wife... He was almost pretty when Elmer married her at 16 in 1947, pleads and begs and cries, wanting him to stay with her, wanting him not to go out. Elmer shakes, shakes her off and grabs his gun from the entryway. His pigs are not just squealing, they are screaming. They sound like a bunch of very young girls surprised by a maniac at a slumber party. He is going. Nothing can make him not go, he tells her. And then freezes with one work calloused hand on the latch of the back door as a screaming howl of triumph rises into the night. It is a wolf cry. There is something so human in the howl that it makes his hand drop from the latch and he almost allows Alice Sinman to pull him back into the living room. He puts his arms around her and draws her down onto the sofa and there they sit like two frightened children. Now the crying of the pin pigs begins to falter and stop. Yes, they stop. One by one, they stop. Their squeals die in hoarse, bloody gargling sounds. The beast howls again, its cry as silver as the moon. Elmer goes to the window and sees something, he cannot tell what, go bounding off into the deeper darkness. Rain comes later, pelting against the windows as Elmer and Alice sit up in bed together, all the lights in the bedroom on. It is a cold rain, the first real rain of the autumn and tomorrow the first tinge of color will have come into the leaves. Elmer finds what he expects in his pig pen. Carnage. All nine of his sows and both of his boars are dead, disemboweled and partly eaten. They lie in the mud, the cold, cold rain pelting down on their carcasses, their bulging eyes staring up at the cold autumn sky. Elmer's brother Pete 
called over from Minot, stands beside him. I don't speak for a long time, and then Elmer says what has been in Pete's mind as well. Insurance will cover some of it. Not all, but some. I guess I can foot the rest. Better my pigs than another person. Pete nods. There's been enough. He says, his voice a murmur that can barely be heard over the rain. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Next full moon, there's got to be 40 men out, or 60, or 160. I'm full, folks, stop dicking around, pretend it ain't happening. And any fool can see. Look over here, for Christ's sake. He points down. On the slaughtered pigs, the soft earth of the pen is full of very large tracks. Look like the tracks of a wolf. They also look weirdly human. You see those tracks? I see them, Elmer allows. You think sweet Betsy from Pike made those tracks? No, I guess not. Werewolf made those tracks, Pete says. You know it. Alice knows it. Most people in this town know it. Hell, even I know it. And I come from the next county over. Looks at his brother, his face dour and stern. The face of a New England Puritan from 1650. He repeats, There's been enough. Time this thing was ended. Elmer considers this long as the rain continues to tap on the two men's slickers. And then he nods. I guess. Not next full moon. Wanna wait till November? Elmer nods. Our woods. They're tracking. If we get a little snow. What about next month? Elmer Zinman looks at his slaughtered pigs in the pen beside, the, beside his barn. Then he looks at his brother Pete. People better look out, he says.